Hi everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. Okay, so as the title suggests that uh, today I'm going to talk about knots and links in over twisted manifolds. And this will be a two part talk. In the first part, I'm going to talk about the motivation, why one should care about these knots, uh, some background material, which I'll keep less technical and some history. The second part uh, will involve the, my recent results about classification of loose links, um, an invariant of links, and then some future work. Okay, so let's start with part one. In three-dimensional contact geometry, we have a very nice dichotomy, which is tight versus over-twisted. I will define this later. So if you look at this literature, you'll see that uh, tight contact structures grab a lot of attention. Tight contact structures are rare and the classification of tight contact structure is a very difficult and interesting problem in contact geometry. Uh, so the natural question that arises that what about over twisted contact structures? Now here comes Eliash Burke's classification. Uh, so Eliash Burke in 89 proved this uh, very nice and important result, which tells us that over twisted contact structures up to isotopy are in one to one correspondence with two plane fields. up to homotopy. So if we understand the homotopy class of two plane fields, we understand over twisted contact structures. The next result is by Gong, and he tells us that D2 and D3 invariant completely determines two plane fields, again up to homotopy. Okay, um, what are D2 and D3? D2 and D3 are obstruction classes. Uh, so very vaguely speaking, they measures how the two plane fields are different on the two skeleton and the three skeleton of the manifold. Uh, so for example, uh, let us take S3. Now S3 doesn't have any two skeleton, that's why S3 doesn't have any D2, uh, but D3 determines all the two plane fields on S3 up to homotopy. Okay, now if we combine Eliashberg and Gomes result, together these tell us that D2, D3 determines over twisted contact structures up to isotopy. So we have a complete classification of uh, over-twisted contact structures. Now, due to this classification, what happened is the knot theory associated to over-twisted contact structures became less explored. Um, so recently, uh, mathematicians started working on this and they are, they are um, finding lots of interesting results uh, and also, it turns out that the knots in over-twisted contact structures are very different than knots in tight contact structures. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, these knots. Okay. So let us talk about some background now. A contact structure on a three-manifold is a nowhere integrable two-plane field. Now, what is this condition nowhere integrable means that... Um, if uh, we can never find a surface 
in the manifold where the contact planes will be tangents everywhere. Basically, this tells us that contact planes are twisting. Here is an example. Um, this is the standard R3, so R3 with the standard contact structure, uh, which is defined as a kernel of a one form. I did not mention it before, but uh, contact structure can be defined as a kernel of a one form. And here the one form is dz minus y dx. And here is this picture, uh, which as you can see that this contact planes twist and they take a left-handed twist. And this is actually a tight contact structure like before I mentioned. Uh, now, what is an over-twisted contact manifold? Uh, this talk will, is on over-twisted manifolds, so I should define it first. Uh, contact three manifold is over-twisted if there is an over-twisted disc embedded in it. And here is a picture of an over-twisted disc. Now, if you look at this picture, the, along the boundary, the contact planes are all tangents, and this is the definition of an overtwisted disk. So if you find such a disk in the manifold embedded, that's important, then it will be overtwisted. And if there is no such disk, then the manifold is tight. All right. Next, knots in contact manifolds. There are two types of knots in a contact manifold. They are known as Legendrian and transverse. And uh, on the left-hand side, we have a local picture of a Legendrian knot. So if we can draw, um, if we draw a tangent vector, pick any point on the knot and draw the tangent, it must lie on the contact plane. That is the definition of a Legendrian knot. For transverse knot, Pick any point and draw a tangent vector that is transverse to the contact plane. So these are the local pictures and here are the definitions. Okay, now classical invariants. There are two types of classical invariants for a Legendrian knot. They are Thurston, Thurston Beniquin invariant, uh, which is known as TV, and then rotation number, which is known as ROT. On the other hand, transverse knots, um, they have just one classical invariant, which is known as the self-linking number. Because I promise that I will not go into technical details, um, these all invariants are well-defined for null homologous knots. That's all I will say about these. Um, all right. But yeah, of course, you can ask me that, uh, what about uh, non-null homologous knots? They are the relative versions of these invariants. But for the, for the purpose of this talk, we don't need them. All right. Now, is there any relationship between Legendrian and transverse knot? This is a very, very important tool in contact geometry. Uh, I should not say tool, uh, but an important technique in contact geometry, uh, which allows us to move back and forth between a Legendrian and transverse representative of the same knot type. Now, from Legendrian to transverse, we use transverse push-off. Uh, and this operation is unique. On the other hand, if we have a transverse knot, we can apply Legendrian approximation which will give us a Legendrian knot. But unfortunately, this Legendrian approximation operation is not well-defined. So for the same transverse knot, we can have lots of Legendrian approximation. But again, there's a good news and that any two Legendrian approximation are related by something known as negative stabilization. Now, negative stabilization is a local operation on a Legendrian knot. Okay. Now, what about knots in overtwisted manifolds? So there are two types of knots in an overtwisted manifolds. Uh, they are known as loose and non-loose. Now, why there are two types of knots? 
let us uh, take this example. Suppose uh, we are in an overtwisted manifold and we have a knot and we remove the tubular neighborhood of the knot. Now, what can happen? Um, either the complement becomes overtwisted, it's still overtwisted, or it can become tight. These two things can happen. And how it can happen is if the knot intersects every overtwisted disc in the manifold, then by removing the tubular neighborhood of the knot, I'm also getting rid of the overtwisted discs. So the manifold becomes tight. Uh, so that's why there are two types of knots. So non-loose are those knots with complement tight and loose knots complement over twisted. There are lots of ways to uh, define these two knots. One is this, that the complement is tight versus complement over twisted. We can also say that a non-loose knot is such a knot which intersects every over twisted disc in the manifold Loose knot is if there is an overtwisted disc disjoint from the knot. So there are a lot of ways to think about. There are also surgery definitions, like if you take a knot and do a surgery on that knot, and if that produces a tight manifold, then it will be non-loose. So a lot of ways to think about these knots. Okay. Now, how these knots are different? Like I mentioned uh, in the first slide, that uh, the knots in overtwisted manifolds are different from knots in tight manifolds. Now, how they are different. The first point is the diagram. A knot theorists care about diagrams a lot, like how to draw the knots. Uh, so in tight S3, we have a nice way to draw any Legendre representative of a knot, which is known as front diagram. So I will draw the trivial knot here. So we have our trivial knot. And the front diagram for this is just adding cusps at vertical tangencies. This is how we do it. So, and there is no crossing for this knot. So we do not have to worry about those crossings. Uh, but if I want to draw in over twisted, so a uh, front diagram, which is this uh, adding cusps, this works in S3, Z standard, which is the tight contact structure. So what about overtwisted? We do not have front diagram in overtwisted contact structures. So uh, to draw in an um, overtwisted S3, mathematicians come up with a nice diagram, nice way to draw that, which is known as a contact surgery diagram. And this is how we draw it. So a contact surgery diagram is basically a surgery diagram And this is the surgery picture. This is a plus one, plus one. And the red component is the unknot. So you just have to do some curvy moves to check that that's a, that's an unknot. And this is in fact a non-loose unknot. And also computing the D3, which is uh, there are algorithms um, to compute D3 from a contact surgery diagram you can find that this invariant is negative one. Um, so as I mentioned before, S3 doesn't have D2, only D3 and negative one is the D3. Okay, uh, by now you should notice this thing that uh, drawing a contact surgery diagram is not so easy for like unknot, it is three component, but as soon as we move to trefoil, the contact surgery diagram, I think it has six components. So it, it becomes complicated in uh, over twisted. Okay. Next is existence. Um, first, first of all, uh, there actually in every contact manifold, we can find a non-loose knot, but we do not know if every knot type has a non-loose representative. So uh, that's, that's a open question. Uh, if in S3, every knot has a non-loose representative. We don't know yet. Uh, and also one thing is non-loose knots are rare.
And this should not be surprising because non-loose knots are very closely related to uh, tight contact structures, right? And tight contact structures are rare. So non-loose knots should be rare as well. Here, I want to mention an interesting fact. And this is due to Eliasberg Fraser, uh, where they proved that S3Z negative one only contains non-loose unknowns. That means that if you are in any other overtwisted uh, contact structure on S3 and you find an unknot, that has to be loose. This is very interesting. So this is due to Eliash work. Okay. Uh, the next is classification. Um, so there are two types of classification in contact geometry. Actually, there are three types, but two of them are uh, equivalent. So Legendre isotopy versus contact homomorphism. Now, in S3 standard, which is the tight contact structure, there these two notions are the same. They are equivalent. So if you can prove up to contact homomorphism, that implies up to Legendre isotopy. But that is not true for any general contact manifold or even in S3 when S3 is uh, over twisted. So if we can prove something up to contact homomorphism, that does not imply Legendre isotopy. Legendre isotopy is a lot stronger uh, there. Uh, and here, there is another notion in over twisted. So this notion is for over twisted, uh, which is course equivalence. So we say that two knots are coarsely equivalent if we can find a contact homomorphism which takes one knot to the other, which is isotopic to the identity. And we will use this notion of equivalence. Okay, next, some brief history. Let's see what we know about uh, these knots and links. So first of all, these non-loose knots are links and all the classifications here will be course equivalence, not up to Legendre isotopy. So the first result is about unknot. The unknot is classified by Elish Beck Fraser in 2000. Uh, the next one is negative torus knot. This is due to Giges Unaran and later Matkovic. Uh, she extended their result, uh, but this is not complete classification. Uh, this is par partial classification. Uh, and this result actually Giges Onaran, this was in 2018. Uh, positive torus knots, again by Giges Onaran, and this is also partial. And this is also in 2018, in the same paper. Uh, next is Hofflink. Uh, this was also by Giges Onaran, and this is in 2020. So as you can see that these all classifications of this uh, torus knots or Hofflink, pretty uh, recent. So what about loose knots? The loose knots are those knots with complement over twisted. Uh, here, the up to contact homomorphism or up to course equivalence classification, this is um, due to Etnayer. So Etnayer proved that null homologous loose knots can be classified completely by uh, their classical invariance, which is TB and rotation number is enough to classify those knots uh, with over twisted uh, complements. And in 2019, Kahn and Chernov has this result, which is up to Legendre isotopy, which is stronger, Legendre or transverse isotopy uh, for transverse knots. Uh, they classified uh, the knots, but here notice there is a stronger condition. And this is that there is a over twisted disc disjoint from both of them. So this is very strong we need to have a common over twisted disk in the complement. So let us just compare these two results. The sec second one is definitely a stronger classification because this is up to isotopy. First one is up to contact homomorphism. But then the second one has this strong condition that we need a common over twisted disk in the complement of both the knots, which is not uh, required for the first result. Uh, so we would really, uh, like to have a result where we can uh, prove uh, isotopy classification up to isotopy when we do not need this condition, the over twisted common over twisted disk, but that seems like a difficult problem. 
okay so the next question is what about uh, links what about loose links if we increase the number of components what happens with uh, with the classification and that is what i'm going to talk about uh, in the second part of this talk so thanks for listening